It's now time for the Billy C Show. Part of the BillyCBoxing.com network. And we're coming to you live from the Billy C Studios in Lake George, New York. I'm Bill Calagero, and it's time for the Billy C Show. Good morning, good day, good evening, whenever you're watching, whenever you're listening. I hope you're doing okay today. Today's show is being brought to us in part by my book, Tom Molino, From Bondage to Baddest Man on the Planet. It's still available where all good books are sold. Get yourself a copy today. Go to Amazon.com. Just punch in Tom Molino or my name, Bill Calagero, and we'll come right up. Uh, Today's show is also being brought to us in part by BillyCBoxing.com. We've updated the site. It's real easy to navigate. We've been putting uh, all kinds of uh, uh, related boxing news, maybe stuff that you haven't seen out there, just, you know, uh, the stuff that builds up boxers uh, from the time that they start out, you know, some maybe uh, beginning uh, uh, careers for some young guys. It'll give you a chance to follow them, uh, check it out. Uh, I get rid of all the non relevant uh, uh, news, and we just post the good stuff. So uh, check it out. Um, including the fight that's taking place this weekend at Mohegan Sun. Um, I'll be there. Uh, Popeye is going to be there. Mr. Rivera will be uh, making his return to Connecticut. So uh, be there. Star Boxing is uh, the promoter. Get yourself some tickets and make sure you tell him Billy C sent you. Um, Just want to make a programming note real quick. Um, Should we lose, should this studio go dark? (laughs) <laughs> we're in the middle of a friggin' snowstorm here in upstate New York. And, uh, I got about uh 10 inches of snow out there and the lights have been going on and off. So I'm going to try to get this show in, uh, as quickly, uh, uh, as possible. My man, Kenny, Kenny bears just popped in, in the chat room. Uh, yeah, it's snowing here, Kenny, you know, uh, I'm packing up the family truckster and I- I'm coming down with no family, just myself. But, uh, uh, anyway, uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube uh, Rumble, podcast accounts, all that stuff. And now we are on Instagram. Don't know much about it, but uh, this newfangled thing called Instagram. Anyway, uh, let's get going real quick. My, I, I'm going to get into all the fights and stuff that took place this uh, past, past weekend. But my main thing is the Tim Zhu, I'm saying it correctly, uh, and uh, Sebastian Fundora fight that took place. Man, I, I, first of all, it was a bloodbath. I, I don't. I don't know if you if you saw it up close or whatever. But I, you know, I got some shots that I want to. I want to show. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, this fight was. Uh, well, check this out. You know, he, obviously, Zoo is on the right of this uh, shot, and uh, Fundora is on the left. Now, Fundora was bleeding too, but uh, Zoo's cut was on the top of his head. It was caused by an elbow. Now, I don't know if the referee ruled it as accidental or didn't make a ruling on it at all that they never mentioned. As far as I can recall, uh, here's another shot. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, zoo was, was not able to fight his fight. Um, and you know, and here, here's the last shot, right. That I have, um, you know, the, the bottom line is, look, somebody asked me on social media, Oh, uh, would you be complaining about it? Uh, if, if the re- if it was the other way, you know, uh, uh, yeah, my man, Kenny's going to leave a light on, uh, I might show up, I, I'm going to show up around time to eat. Cause I, I know there's uh, a, a lot of good food there. Uh, put, put the name of the place in the location. I'll mention it on the show right now, but, uh, but anyway, um, you know, when you look at these cuts and, and these, the, 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 uh, the, the photos of these cuts, and if you watch the fight, the, the blood was pouring out. I mean, it looked like, I, I don't know if you, some of you older people remember the movie Airplane when he was sweating. I mean, that's how much blood was coming out. Now, look, I blame two people for this fight. Now, now the, the positive side of this, there's, there's two positive sides. One, credit to, I mean, how much more credit can you give Tim Zhu for, for continuing with this fight? I mean, talk about a warrior. Uh, you know, hats off to him. And I give credit to, to Sebastian Fundora because Fundora got nailed with some heavy duty shots. In the meantime, when he realized uh, that the blood was clearly bothering Tim Zhu, 
his game plan changed. Now, I don't know if you've watched a lot of Fundora's fights, but you know, he's he's a monster, six foot five, uh, all that stuff, but he fights like he's a short, powerful fighter. He he likes to get in there and he, he doesn't utilize his his reach uh and jab, which he started doing against Tim Zhu uh in light of the uh attack mode that Zhu was in. And guess what? I hope he realized that the guy is in that weight class, the guy is almost unbeatable because nobody can reach him. If he fights the way he fought Tim Zhu in that fight, Sebastian Fandora is going to be a tough out for that division. Now, as far as the cut goes, I, you know, I, I blame, you know, forget about the elbow and, and uh, you can't blame the fighters. Okay. Unless it was blatant. And to me watching the replay several times, I didn't think it was blatant. It, 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 there was a lot of punches being thrown. Um, it is what it is. This is this is the hurt business, you know. Um, but I blame two people. Number one, I blame the ringside physician. I mean, this guy looked at it every friggin' round and said it was okay to continue. I mean, the amount of blood that was pouring out of that cut, all right? I mean, look, you know, it was on his head. Heads bleed bad, right? But it was clearly going into his eye. And if they would have stopped it, his corner should have stopped it, uh, after that second, uh, after that second round, after the third round, they would have went to a technical decision. And you know, on my scorecard, I had Tim Zhu um, winning the first two rounds. He suffered the cut in the second round. The next two, I gave to Fundora. Okay, um, so if should that fight have been stopped prior to the start of the fourth round? Um, you know, I, it would have most likely gone to Tim Zhu. But, you know, from, you know, I, I did give round five to Tim Zhu, um, but then round six, seven, eight, uh, nine, 10, 11, and 12 were all so close. They could have gone either way. My official score was 115, 113 in favor of Fundora. Um, but, I not only do I blame the ringside physician, but I, I clearly blame uh, the corner of Tim Zhu. Now, they said they had all the right supplies. Now, look, a head bleeds bad. I'll give a shout out to Jesus. Uh, uh, he's uh, uh, in the chat room right now. He's been a regular here on, on Thursday afternoons. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 listen, adrenaline stops. The, the, I'm not a cut man, but I know that when they put adrenaline in a cut, it, it, it coagulates the blood quickly and prevents it from, from bleeding. Uh, the, the cut was extremely deep. It was on the head that bleeds. So I, I'm not sure if they had the right stuff in the corner or not. But, you know, a corner's job is to look out for their fighter. If they F up and don't have the right shit with them, well, then they should have stopped the fight. You know, it, it was it was bad to watch, not because of all the blood and stuff. And again, if if you're a Fundora fan, you know, you, you were glad because it made Fundora fight the way he should be fighting. OK, but from a safety issue, I mean, we watch so many times these fights get stopped prematurely. The guy looks like he's in trouble and the ref's waving it off. And, you know, in the ref's defense, um, who uh, was Harvey Doc, one of my favorite referees. Um, I, I mean, he kept saying, are you sure? Are you sure? I always should stop, you know, shouldn't stop. It. So, I mean, I, you know, it is what it is. Um, but, you know, the two people I have to blame for this fight, uh, 100%, none of the blame goes on Harvey Doc. None of the blame goes to either fighter, okay? Because, like I said, this is a, this is the fight business. You're supposed to hurt each other, right? The blame clearly goes on the ringside physician and Tim Zhu's own corner. I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. You know, um, it, even though it was bleeding and hard to watch, uh, the fight was extremely uh, entertaining. I, I loved it. Uh, I was uh, I was glad uh, uh, that uh, that we got an entertaining fight. The card, uh, you know, do you think it was worth seventy bucks? Absolutely not. Uh, not in my opinion. That fight was good. Uh, Pitbull Cruz, um, he uh, he fought uh, and uh, and stopped uh, Raleigh Romero. He improved to twenty six and two with a with a draw with eighteen of his wins coming by knockout. And uh, uh, Rolando Romero dropped to fifteen and two. 
Um, also on that card, uh, uh, Ursulandi Lara. He improved to 30 wins, three losses, and three draws uh, when he destroyed Michael Zafara. Uh, I mean, just knocked him out um, uh, two minutes and 59 seconds uh, in the uh, uh, in the first round. So, um, I, you know, it wasn't uh, uh, that competitive at all. Uh, and, and in a fight that I was really looking forward to, my man let me down. I love the flyweight, junior flyweight, and super flyweight divisions. We got a lot of talented fighters, and my man Julio Cesar Martinez. Um, he won. He improved to twenty-one wins, three losses, with fifteen of his wins coming by knockout by a twelve-round majority decision over Angelino Cordova, who I didn't give a shot in hell a win in this fight. And man, was he a tough scout! Uh, I love this fight. I loved watching it. Cordova uh, drops to eighteen wins, one loss, one draw, twelve of his wins coming by knockout. One thirteen, one thirteen. Uh, one judge saw it even, and the other two had a 114-112 in favor of Martinez. Um, very uh, entertaining fight uh, for uh, uh, for for the fans like myself who uh, who like uh, those uh, those weight classes. Um, just to jump back to uh, the Fundora uh, fight immediately after the fight, um, the WBO. Remember, there were two titles on the line: the WBO, which was Tim Zhu's title. Uh, they sanctioned Fedora, but they had a a stipulation in the contract since Fedora was coming off a loss and he was a last minute sub. He said, you know, should uh, the the winner of this fight, their immediate uh, uh, rematch has to be against Terence Crawford. Okay, they both agreed to that. Um, you know, so so they announced it. They re reified that because uh, the truth of the matter is is. Uh, Errol Spence Jr. was sniffing around the fight and has uh, uh, called out Fundora. Uh, Fundora's uh, promoter, Samson Lukowicz, which is he's a, he's a really good guy, um, he went out on a limb and said, look, there was a rematch clause in the contract. We're men of our word, and if Tim Zhu wants a rematch, we will give it to him. And then, of course, uh, the Nevada State Athletic Commission threw a wrench in everybody's plans uh, when they turned around and put Sebastian uh, Fundora on suspension uh, for six months. He won't be allowed uh, to even start training technically until September um, after that fight. So we'll see what happens when uh, everything shakes out. Um, so that's uh, my thoughts on that. that. That was a horrific cut. There's no way they should have let it continue. Uh, I was extremely disappointed uh, to watch um, that happen, um, you know, and, and put a fighter in, in jeopardy. Uh, and not only, I, I mean, the, the the guy had to lose a half a pint of blood during that fight. I mean, he's lucky he didn't pass out, you know, uh, but uh, in any event, um, the fight that I was looking forward to most this weekend, and uh, man, did it live up to it, to the billing. It was actually on Easter Sunday. It was a heavyweight fight between Fabio Wardley and uh, Frazier Clark. Um, both of these fighters uh, had a history. Uh, it was a kind of a grudge match. They were really looking forward to fighting each other. Uh, uh, Wardley was rated by all four sanctioning bodies. Um, Clark uh, wasn't, um, but uh, they both went in this fight. And if you missed it, Man, you missed a good one. Heavyweight fight, two young fighters, Brits, of course. They, you know, these are the only fighters that actually fight each other when they're young, going against each other. And man, did they produce a great fight in the heavyweight division? Um, you know, it was back and forth. Wardley got his nose busted up pretty bad, so he's having a hard time breathing and seeing with his blood. Clark got dropped once, got a point taken away, and at the end of the day, uh, the score, the the scores were. 114, 113 for Wardley, 115, 112 for Clark, and the third judge had it even. Uh, so they're looking to uh, uh, get a uh, rematch there. But man, did I love this fight! Uh, if you uh, haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Um, but uh, uh, you know, it, it it not only did I think it was good, but apparently it did tremendous numbers on TV. Now here in the states, we saw it on Peacock, the Peacock Network. Uh, but over in the UK, it was on Sky Sports. Uh, according to Sky, I don't know what the Peacock numbers were, uh, but uh, 746,000 
uh, viewers uh, were peak. And during the whole event, uh, 1.7 million, which uh, broke all kinds of records, I guess, for Sky uh, in a boxing event. So uh, congratulations to both of those Brits putting on a great show. And uh, as a result of the great numbers, we also got my man, Eddie Hearn. And now I was talking about this kid, his, his heavyweight, young heavyweight. His name is Johnny Fisher. Um, I'm keeping an eye on him. I, I, I think he shows promise. He's real young. Well, Eddie Hearn, and this is what I love about the British uh, boxing scene. You know, if, if this guy, Johnny Fisher, was fighting in the U.S., he wouldn't be put into a tough fight. And either one of those two other fighters, uh, Frazier, uh, Clark, and, and Fabio Wardley, if they were U.S. fighters, they would have never fought each other because the U.S., they, they run and duck and wait and, and, and you know, fight to, the tomato cans, the, the, the proverbial tomato can, no disrespect. Um, but uh, um, Eddie Hearn, he went on, as soon as the fight was over, uh, you know, Eddie Hearn said, uh, he's talking about this fight, he says, that knows. Uh, caused Wardley some problems. It did. He, he was having a hard time breathing. He said he's going to need to get that sorted out, but he can't go through that with that kind of damage. And uh, well done to Frazier, who's a, a great guy. And I was straight on the phone with Johnny Fisher, and I said to him, that's the level I really feel you're at, uh, David Adderley, and then those guys. I, I want to see Johnny Fisher pushing fights like that because he could provide the same kind of heart and the same kind of energy uh, at that domestic uh, British level. And it could be really exciting and well done for everybody. It would be a tremendous fight. He says, when I saw how much of a tremendous fight it was back and forth, I guess some people thought Frazier won. Some people thought Fabio won. It was really good British title fight. It just goes to show you how good those Lonsdale belt domestic clashes are. We saw it with that fight. We saw it the other week with the Frank Warren show. We saw it with Reese Bellotti and, and Liam Dillon. It's fantastic. Great for the sport. We want those fights. We don't want uh, those fights as a fighter. Uh, you, uh, you, he's saying you don't want those fights as a fighter because you know that they're tough. He said, but it's going to take a lot of more miles off the clock. But for boxing uh, and to see the tremendous bravery and heart uh, and the damage that these guys uh, take, it's going to uh, uh, really add to the mix. So, um, you know, I, I love their attitude over there. On that side of the pond, a uh, shout out to my man Juan. He's in the chat room. Um, you know, this is why I love the British boxing scene so much. Um, they fight each other. And uh, I'll tell you, as, as far as Johnny Fisher goes, um, you know, I, 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 he's he's very raw. He, he's got a long way to go, um, but he's got the power. And the one thing that I saw with Wardley and Clark was that, you know, I mean, Clark was down in the fight. Um, I, I just think a powerful guy could hurt them. But, you know, hey, hats off to them for fighting each other. Some other fights um, in uh, a, a, a super uh, uh, welterweight or junior middleweight title, um, Serhi Bohachuk improved to 24-1 and one with 23 uh, of his wins coming by knockout when he won a 12-round decision over Brian Mendoza, who drops to 22-4. and four. What a great fight that was. Very entertaining. 118, 110, 117, 111 twice. Um, this guy, Boha Chuck, is a is a maniac. Uh, what what a what a bull. And uh hats off to Mendoza. I mean, he was he was busted up pretty bad, uh, but uh but wet, uh, made it to the end. Um on the undercard of the um Fundora uh uh zoo fight. There was a couple of decent fights. I mean, I, I don't think the card was worth 70 bucks, but there were a couple of decent fights that were on for free. And one of them being was uh, Kermel Moten. Um, you know, I guess he's a, a, a Mayweather, uh, Floyd Mayweather protege, and he's one of the best guys I've seen um, come out of the Mayweather camp. And it'll be interesting to see because this kid looks like, first of all, he looks like he's got all the talent in the world. One of my knocks on Floyd was that, he seems to not want his young fighters to to be compared to him or even, God forbid, if they are as good as him. And, you know, at times they all seem to be led down a negative path. Now, I'm not saying that's Floyd because Floyd hasn't gone down a negative path. But you look at guys like, you know, well, Tank Davis, uh, Adrian Broner, to, to name a few, even Errol Spence to a degree. I mean, you know, all of them have faced their demons. I hope this uh, Moten uh, does not. 
Uh, he shows all kinds of uh, talent. He's now 3-0 and with two knockouts. And uh, he fought another tough guy, Anthony Cuba, uh, who lost his first fight. Seven wins, one loss, and two draws now. Um, but, uh, but man, was it an interesting fight. I, I re enjoyed that. Um, so uh, there were, uh, uh, you know, some decent uh, undercard uh, fights. But, again, I don't think it was worth 70 bucks. Uh, I hope that's not uh, going to be what we're going to see things to come. Uh, on the zone. Also last week, Gilberto Ramirez improved to 46 and one with 30 knockouts when he beat a uh, previously unbeaten uh, Arslan uh, Gulliamarin, who lost his first fight 27 and one now, uh, 118, 110. All three judges saw, saw it. Uh, remember, Cuba Pulov was supposed to fight for the regular old WBA title. Well, he uh, fought a sub because uh, Manuel Char dropped out because of an injury. And uh, Pulev uh, scored a workmanlike 12-round uh, decision over Ihor Shevardovsky uh, to improve to 31-3 and three with 14 knockouts. And Shevardovsky drops to 11-2. and two. Uh, Also, his brother, uh, who's in the cruiserweight division, uh, uh, Tervel Pulov, he improved to 19-1 and one with uh, 14 knockouts. Uh, when he scored a unanimous decision over Raleigh Lambert, who drops to 16 wins, three losses, and a draw. 79-73, um, 89-73, 80-72, with uh, the way uh, the judges scored that one. And on Friday night on ESPN, um, Oscar Valdez scored a seventh-round stoppage over Leon Wilson to improve the 32 wins, two losses, with 23 of his wins coming by knockout. Wilson loses for the third time in his career um, and uh, the official time was two minutes and 48 seconds of the seventh round. I didn't think Liam had a, uh, a chance on that. My other topic I wanted to touch on, which was supposed to be my main topic, but watching all that blood, I mean, you know, uh, the, the people that were thinking about uh, watching a, a gory uh, horror flick didn't need to after watching uh, Tim Zhu's uh, fight against uh, Sebastian Fundora. But a lot of talk has been out about. Uh, Olander, uh, Usyk, and and Tyson Fury. You know, we know that the fight has been rescheduled several times. It's now scheduled for uh, May 18th in Saudi Arabia. But, um, you know, first, uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, Usyk was saying, you know, he doesn't want to say nothing bad. You know, he's he's basically keeping his finger crossed, and, and he won't really believe that the fight's going to take place in, until the bell rings. Well, Last week, Alex uh, Krasjuk, uh, who's the promoter for um, uh, Usyk, um, made some interesting comments. Um, you know, he he uh, was speaking. Uh, he did an interview with World Boxing News, and and uh, this is what he said. And I quote: "Theoretically, the rematch should have happened before the end of 2024." Uh, should happen before the end of 2024. However, we all know that Tyson is not the world's best rematcher. After he loses to Usyk in the first bout, you can you can't predict his behavior at all. I say this, but I have no guarantee that the first fight ever takes place. Now, first he's, he's saying, you know, acting confident that uh, Usyk's going to beat him, and he's looking ahead to the rematch that's supposed to also take place this year. But then he goes on to say that you know he started he's pretty skeptical that the first place that the first fight's going to take place at all. He said this man has withdrawn four times in a row already. We've even decided to stop all jokes and criticism towards him to support his confidence. If there's anything else we could do to help get him in the ring with Usyk, we're ready to do that. Usyk's goal is to get the fourth heavyweight belt and complete the undisputed title. After accomplishing this mission, other options can uh, be considered. And and no, wait, there's more, boys and girls, because Turkey a la Sheik, which I know uh, His Excellency, you know, I I, I, I don't want him to mispronounce his name, but you all know I, I have a hard time with names. Um, uh, his Excellency uh, says uh, that he was quoted as saying, uh, after they rearranged uh, this fight to take place May 18th, 
he warned Tyson Fury that if he was going to withdraw from this re rescheduled fight of May 18th, that he would be subjected to a financial penalty of $10 million. I'm glad. I'm glad uh, that he did that. Um, again, I, I'm rushing through this show because we're, we're in the middle of a snowstorm here in Lake Judge, New York, and I'm, uh, I know that I'm going to lose power again. It's been going on and off. Um, Golden Boy announced the uh, undercard for Devin Haney and uh, Ryan Garcia, which is taking place in a couple of weeks in Brooklyn. Um, and, uh, you know, another one of these pay-per-view cards I I'm not that crazy about. Um, Arnold Barbosa, 29-0, uh, and 0, he's fighting for uh, some belt against uh, Sean McComb, who's 18-1. and 1. It's a 10-round fight. Um and uh, there's uh, number one ranked super welterweight Charles uh, Conwell, 18 and 0, 13 knockouts. It's taken on Nathaniel uh, Gillimore, uh, who's 22 and 7, uh, with a draw with 17 knockouts. Uh, not impressed with either one of those fights. I mean, I I'm glad that, you know, those two A side fighters are there, but I, you know, I question the opposition. However, there are two other fights on this card that I'm, I am looking forward to. In the super middleweight division, uh, Bektamir uh, Mezelkulov, uh, who's 13-1 and one with 10 knockouts, he's going to defend uh, his belt against, uh, which is a not a world title, but uh, Pierre uh, Diabombi, uh, who's undefeated 22-0 and 0 with one knockout. Um, I like this fight. Uh, this guy is a, is a, 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 both of them are pretty good, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And in the um, Superfly, Superflyweight division, uh, John Scrappy Ramirez, 13-0 and with nine knockouts, is taking on uh, David Yuminguez, uh for an interim belt. Yuminguez is 15-1 and with 11 knockouts. I like that fight. So, uh, uh, you know, we got a couple of uh, other good fights uh, on tap for uh, um, for the uh, Atlanta, uh, for the um, uh Barkley Center fight, uh, Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. I haven't heard anything else about Ryan Garcia and his mental state. Uh, I know uh, New York, there was rumor that New York was going to make him undergo a, 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 a psychological evaluation. And then, of course, Teddy Nutcase uh, Atlas is uh, all, all for it. You know, um, I goofed today. I promoted that we were going to do our uh, heavyweight spotlight on uh, former uh, world champion Jack Johnson, but Alex Papali uh, informed me that it, it's not scheduled for today. It, it's scheduled for two weeks from today. So I was already, I had some nice footage for you, and Alex does a great job. Uh, so I, I'm not going to do it without him. So uh, we'll wait for him. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I apologize for anybody that was looking forward uh, to that. Um, but um, Atlantic City, you know, at one point, Atlantic City was a, was a hotbed for, for boxing, especially uh, in the late 60s and early 70s. It was actually a bigger spot than Las Vegas. Um, and if I remember correctly, if my, his, if, if my boxing history uh, is, uh, is correct, I believe that one of uh, one of Las Vegas's first things to attract uh, people to boxing was they were the first ones to have the ring card girls. Unless I have it reversed, maybe it was Atlantic City, but either Atlantic City or Las Vegas was the first ones to have girls do the ring cards. Because if you look at some of the older footage, it was a guy, man, it was a dude. You know, I mean, hey, listen, I look forward to the ring card girls. Let's be real. You know, some of them uh, are worthwhile. You know, sometimes then I have the nerve to usually turn around and ask somebody, hey, what round is it? <laughs> well, you just watched the ring card girl walk around. Yeah, but I didn't get up to the, I never got up to the number, the round number. But, uh, and remember, speaking of uh, ring cards, um, Dave, my, my man Dave has popped into the chat room. Hey, Dave, it's snowing here in New York, you know. Um, we, uh, we're looking forward to, uh, <laughs> yeah, Juan says ring card girls are great. Uh, I'm looking forward to this uh, fight card on Saturday. Uh, I'm going to be at Mohegan Sun ringside. So if you're going to go to that fight, um, you know, definitely look me up. And uh, if you weren't planning on going, do it. It's at uh, Mohegan Sun. It's Saturday. I'm going to uh, be there. 
and I'd like to see you there as well. Uh, speaking of what I started saying, Atlantic City uh, used to be a hotbed for boxing. Well, there's a promoter uh, out there. Um, his name is uh, Larry Goldberg, and, and it, it, you guys that have been around a long time uh, most likely heard of a boxing website called Boxing Insider. Uh, well, um, Larry was the guy that started that. Well, he he's into uh, promoting now. And what's cool about it, and I had a long conversation with, with Larry a couple of weeks ago, uh, what's cool about his approach is he's, he's trying to do exactly what boxing needs. He's trying to do some shows that feature young, up-and-coming talent fighting real fights. Um, he really doesn't, uh, you know, go out of his way to sign fighters. So it's not like he's trying to overprotect them. And they have, in my opinion, the best professional uh, boxing matchmaker in the sport in Eric Botcher. He's he's making these matches and uh, and they're really good. And he's doing his first show. He was doing a, a bunch of shows in New York City at the uh, Sony Hall. And uh, it's real. T- it's a hey, listen. I mean, New Jersey, my man, Larry Hazard. I mean, that's a strict commission, very reputable commission. Um, but New York is a little over the top uh, with some of the stuff. So it's very hard to uh, to make any money um, doing small club shows like these uh, in uh, in New York. Um, so uh, Larry uh, is going to Atlantic City. He's going to be at the uh, Tropicana Hotel uh, and Casino on May 11th. Um, he's got uh, some good fighters that are um, uh, going to be scheduled for that card. John Leonardo is a, a junior featherweight, 10 wins, one loss, one draw. Uh, Justin Figueroa is a junior middleweight. He's 8-0 uh, with six knockouts. He's on the card. Price Taylor, a heavyweight, 3-0 and out of Brooklyn, New York, with two knockouts. Uh, he just was on their last card. Uh, he's scheduled to be on it. Undefeated uh, Jacob Solis of, uh, of New York. Uh, he's a three and with three knockouts. Um, and, uh, there'll be some more announced soon. So check it out. Um, you know, uh, it's, uh, I like it. It's also streamed for free and, uh, it is what it is. Well, listen, like I told you guys, uh, this was going to be a, a short version of the show only because of the weather conditions. And I wanted to start it and end it on my terms. I didn't want, uh, uh, you know, mother nature to sh- to cut the show short. Uh, but listen, always remember, you drop me an email, Billy at Talkin Boxing, T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G dot com with your comments, your thoughts, uh, questions, and I'll read them live on air. Uh, I am uh, dabbling a little more in social media, so make sure you follow me and, and uh, uh, do some uh, uh, correspondence. Um, like I said, we're, we're on Instagram now. Uh, I don't know how you can find me there. <laughs> Look up my name or, or talk in boxing. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, I just, I just learned about hashtag and, you know, I, I knew what hashtags were, but I didn't realize, you know, how helpful they were. Uh, also Facebook follow us. we got a couple of different, uh, Facebook accounts and a group. Uh, so, uh, make sure you do well and a group even, uh, Twitter, all that stuff, man. Would appreciate you to follow us and do the likes and the retweets and the refaces or whatever you call them and all that happy stuff. And I'm an IT guy. But uh, anyway, hey, listen, thanks for joining us. Uh, we are locked into this time slot now. So we will be doing uh, the shows live on Thursdays, noon Eastern time. So uh, make sure you tune in uh, next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Until then, ciao, baby.